Welcome to episode 6. <laughs> 26 26. I uh-huh. cut this out this time. Last time I would have said cut this shit out. <laughs> Last time so that could only not is shit. He didn't remove shit. it like everything is fucked up. It's shit, <laughs> but you are flowing so well. Yeah. <laughs> Why don't you better cut this shit out? Let's <laughs> 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 better go glitches. It's not true. And you let me glitch. Welcome to episode 26 of Breaking Hearts. Kama kawaida it's your boy Hafare, aka Mr. Metronome, aka your girlfriend's boyfriend, aka Rodney Malik Casino, and as usual, it's your girl Suki, aka suki.jpg, aka suki murage, aka uzumaki, aka Jessica Rabbit. Thank you for coming for another week. I would like our guest to introduce himself, but it goes without um it goes without saying. Just say your name and like who you are. Yeah. Okay, I want a cool intro now. Damn. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> hi, my name is Mao, uh, aka Mao from Noa, mm-hmm. aka uh, Kamau from Kanoa, as Lucrito likes to call me. <laughs> And uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you, thank you, thank you for honoring Welcome. my invite. Thank mm-hmm. you for coming on the show. I know it's a bit short notice. Lakini, you are here, we are here. <laughs> And let's do this. Now, mm-hmm. before we start with you, I just want to go quickly through our weekly listens. Uh, for me this week, uh, I think like three or four projects and a few mixes. Mm-hmm. Let's start with Demi Devil by Ashniki. Mm-hmm. You know Ashniki, she did that, you know. Um, it's, a, it's a song on TikTok, I'm crazy but you like it. It's yeah. called Daisy, yeah. So this is from, this is the album the song was on. It's from, I think, 2019. It's legitimately bad bitch music. Like mm-hmm. it's waking up in the morning, looking, like, looking at the mirror, telling yourself I'm a bad bitch and I'm going to conquer this day. Mm-hmm. Like, it's very heavy Grimes vibe. It Ooh. feels like Grimes. Actually, Grimes is on the project. Oh, nice. Mm-hmm. Yes. So, and I love Grimes, by the way. At Angel is one of my favorite albums of all time. Mm-hmm. Um, it's mostly hip-hop, but has a very heavy industrial electronic feel. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of metallic, like, it feels like working in a factory. Yeah. <laughs> it feels like working in an iron, iron factory. Mm-hmm. But it's really fun. It's really, really fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's so much bounce on the tape. I love listening to it. A lot of the talk was about giving head, which I don't understand why. <laughs> Like a lot of the album was just focused on giving head. Like you don't give head but your girl gives good head like blah blah blah. It was fun. It was That's the entire thing was just shitting on niggas. Literally. <laughs> just niggas are whack. It sounds like a good project. <laughs> it is. Uh-huh. Um I really enjoyed it. There's a sort of cover of Skater Boy Avril Lavigne on here. Ooh. That is so much Tasty. fun. Mm-hmm. Um she she puts her own twist on it, but it's mm-hmm. nice. It's really dope. Um again, I'm telling you that the tape is very sexual. Like there's a lot of talk about sex and not getting orgasm and how men are bad at sex like if, if you like come on nini misandrist you would mm-hmm. love this <laughs> if you're into misandry this is the music for you <laughs> by the way if you're mad about your ex this is the shit you should be listening to so there was that um moved on to an r&b project southern mm-hmm. delicacy by jaylen josie i hope i have not butchered that name mm-hmm. um now this is completely different this is bonnet and camisole r&b at the bonnet and camisole so, <laughs> <laughs> this is good night rnb this is like you, have you ever seen that tweet that oh at the as we girl rnb like ile at the wives in the in their 50s yeah. like used to dress like this mm-hmm. but their husbands came home every day that's the type of music <laughs> <that is. laughs> yeah like in so it's big, those long yeah, those long kamisi, nighties basically uh-huh. like kauna vanga kamisi this is the music for you wallahi mm-hmm. it's so dope <laughs> <laughs> and it, okay i called it gender defined defined gender role bobs it defined gender role bobs <laughs> wow <laughs> <laughs> yeah. is she saying about like catering to her man or like what's it's that like about cater to you by yeah. just yeah. <laughs> yeah is that is that type of shit like i nice. love you i want to be with you i want to take care of you mm-hmm. but um always there's always one song about oh you broke my heart ni 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 every r&b mm-hmm. tape has that song mm-hmm. has that one song where any livunjo raw maze lakini i got out of it stronger ni ni girl power music but mostly because it's like um mm, 10 tracks long it's an ep but like three of them are skits mm-hmm. which are extremely hilarious by the way some nice. of the best skits in meskia mm-hmm. um it's like a sampler plate for really good r&b mm-hmm. it, it covers the the whole like spectrum of what r&b could be Mm-hmm. There are songs that feel like big room R&B. Some of them are slow jams. Some of them feel like Beyonce in 204. Nice. Th- that is a really good tape by the way. Make sure so you listen to it. It's a 2023 tape. Yeah, it came out um about two weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Um some songs feel like dancehall, some songs feel like pop, some feel like traditional R&B, but it's really fun. Mm-hmm. You should listen to that. 
And then you never learn by Zoe Kengocha. Oof. Mm. I love First of all, the artwork. Mm. It's giving. Yeah. It's giving. It's strong. Yeah, those um the production. I love the production. Mm-hmm. It's soft, but it also packs a punch. And her vocals. <laughs> I, I, I think nice. her voice has been my favorite thing about just the, the music that she makes is so vocally strong. Mm-hmm. Laird also like I love the way that um her voice blends in with like the beats specifically mm. and Feels lyrically strong as well. they yeah, are very lyrically very strong. same as in what like stylistically mm. it reminds me of like Ali Jesse Ware mm. the stuff she was putting out before like um around uh what's this called devotion mm-hmm. when she put out devotion and maybe before she put out tough love mm-hmm. I I really enjoyed it really and I had a friend just text me this morning have you listened to the new Zoe it's really really good yeah I'm is. like yeah I have and I enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. It's going back on rotation, by the way, like one of my favorite projects this year. Mm-hmm. And finally, The Universe is Holding You by Mao from Nowhere. But we'll get into that. <laughs> we'll get into <laughs> it. Okay, okay, <laughs> we'll talk about that shortly. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so last week, I listened to about six projects. I'm just going to run through them really quickly because I'm interested in hearing what you've been listening to as mm-hmm. well. Um, also, congratulations on the project. Thank you. Mm-hmm. It was one of my favorite listens from last week. I'll oh, say that yay. the universe definitely was holding me. <laughs> that's, what, that's what we're here for, honestly. Yeah, and um, You Never Learn as well. Um, I, I listened to them actually like back to back. It came out around the same day. And um, I added Nympho by Shy Girl. So that's the deluxe edition of last year's Project Nymph. Wow. Nymph was really good. It's so Nymph good. Nymph was really good. Bjork is on there. Sebda Lisa's on there. Um, I thought it was very... Uh, still one of my favorite songs from last year. Kuchi. Yeah. Oh, no. Kuchi still one of my favorite songs from last year. But uh, I, I particularly liked the Bjork um, collaboration because I feel like I, after reading the interview that they did together, they, um, they had an interview on Interview Magazine. And the conversation they were having was so vibey. I was like, oh my God, what did this sound like if it was in music? And that's exactly what I got mm. from this project. So I'm very happy that um, Shy Girl put this out. She blessed blessed me along with so many other blessings last <laughs> week. Pilani Bubu, uh, Lockdown Love Story, which is a 2022 project. But um, I revisited it because the vibes were just nebulous. I needed to be on a cloud somewhere. Um, and Pilani Bubu's... Um, Vocals on this project are fantastic. It's more about like love during lockdown, um, everything that we experienced during that period. I felt like reliving it through her lens or like viewing it through her lens was very interesting. So um, then I jumped to two projects from 2007-2008 by an artist called Stacey Epps, who is now Mad Lib's manager. Um, uh, the, the the projects themselves were madly produced, so they have a lot of. I I feel like it sounded a lot like what I was listening to the week before, which is Bahamadia, and I liked Stacy's vocals on like very grimy madly beats. A lot of reviews from that period didn't appreciate it at the time, but I particularly liked them. And it's always the case, by the way. Yeah. Like, th- sometimes things are just ahead of their time. <laughs> they are ahead of mm-hmm. their time, and I wish she was still making music. But now she's a she's an entertainment lawyer, Ooh. which I think is still a great vein to to practice. What in. a career pivot! What a Extreme career pivot! One. <laughs> But um, I, I think it, it visits one of my favorite topics, which I will get into when we talk about your project, mm-hmm. which is artists who have like very many outlets and things that they do within the industry. Oh, okay. Word. Yeah. Some of your collaborations, I, I'd, I'd love to know how that came together and For like sure. what... What 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 you did to push people to come and, you know, like create yeah. with you. <laughs> that must have been an experience. No, for sure. Yeah. Definitely. But it's, I mean, usually it's quite serendipitous, which is funny. I feel like mm-hmm. um, there's a Twitter trend going around about like most random crossovers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And like, it's just, it's hilarious to see. I mean, like, for example, I don't know how this, I don't know if this is like a collab or like random, but like Frank Ocean's merch mm-hmm. is like succession based. Right now. Ooh, yeah, and these are like is. Kendall Roy teas. Yeah. <laughs> I just feel like some of those like you can't anticipate how people are gonna find you and your stuff. Like yeah. those, those collabs happen. Yeah. Yeah, that's I haven't watched cool. succession yet. But at this point I feel like I know everything that I happens. I feel like you've you, if you've been on Twitter, you've watched <laughs> yeah, it. Like, yeah, yeah, like the spoilers are insane right exactly, now. Exactly. Like you wake up every Monday morning, oh my god, I can't believe they did that. And then there's a whole like <laughs> somebody with Twitter Blue writes a ten thousand word review like that of the episode. So it's someone with Twitter that. Blue. <laughs> <laughs> 
But yeah, so what were you listening to last week? Or who have you been Oof. listening to lately that's... Yeah. Honestly, I feel like because of the... Um, because of the album being just like a bit of a stressor, mm-hmm. like, and I was I was kind of coming back to it, I was revisiting it. Um, nothing could change at this point because it was all in the yeah. back end, but I just feel like I was sort of very much in that world trying to think about like how to move forward with things. I didn't get to listen to too mm-hmm. much this week. Um, I haven't listened to all of Zoe, but I listened to part of it. It's fantastic mm-hmm. so far. I'm excited yeah. to like get back into the whole thing. Mm-hmm. Um, one product I did manage to finish um just because i guess at that time i was like going somewhere like long mm-hmm. distance and i was just like jamming um was any oh yes yeah. you know any any was actually like in the suggestions for anyone that listened to the project during last week mm. any would come immediately after your project oh wow okay <laughs> so i, I love think that. it's a great oh, okay, on gas, yeah on, on spotify you know, the algo sleep. loves you oh man you know what <laughs> it's been a long it's been a long time coming but finally we're getting some algo love mm-hmm. so exactly yeah friends. Um, uh-huh. I'm trying to think of what else. I, I feel like I come back to the same things sometimes, mm-hmm. and I'm just like looking for a bit of a grounding. Mm-hmm. So I like one of my favorite albums is Silent Alarm by Block Party. Ooh, I listen nice. to that quite a lot. Um, and let me just check because there's an artist I found on it's a super random, like very uh, soft indie album. Um, mm. Also being converted to Apple Music. I mean, the process of being converted to Apple Music is Apple strange. Music, pretty much. I believe in it completely. It's so weird. I don't know how I feel about you it because I've just had such loyalty uh, for wait, a while. Wait, you, you, you've been more on Spotify all this time. Yeah, just because like, really? I feel like... I mean, I was, I was a big like iTunes person. Mm-hmm. And I would always like make sure my library was perfect. So even if you pirate yeah. things, you're like downloading the artwork and you're like filling mm-hmm, in all the mm-hmm. details. Um, mm-hmm. But then I think once I got Spotify and I could just like... Um, listen to things i haven't downloaded and oh. it was way back when it was like free it was like 2011 mm-hmm. um that shifted it for me and then i started to like use like spotify on my phone too i love spotify's yes. algo mm-hmm. but I, I i am stuck on apple music because of the quality difference and people t- say that you can't notice it you can notice it you can you notice can. it yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but the problem with like apple music is the algo is so like i feel like the, the person running the algo is just a monkey with a wrench in a room full of servers <laughs> just banging on things <laughs> Basically, mm-hmm. you have no idea how the Apple Music algo works. It doesn't mm-hmm. recommend anything. Like the way you know when you when you finish on Spotify, something plays, something similar. On Apple but Music, it, when it when it ends, it ends. Like bro, yeah. going back to the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> now go find something else to listen to. You play. Mm-hmm. Like Spotify will tell you, ah, you like this? Here's something. Here, have something else. Like have a little taste of this. What Apple Music will tell you, no. I went to understand. give you lossless and <laughs> that's, it. that's it. We're not adding anything else. Actually, or, or do they like revisit like the songs that you've already liked and downloaded? I, I feel like there's usually like a like an Infinity Play. When Infinity Play came in, it changed the game for me. Uh, mm. no. Me, like if I'm on the laptop, Infinite if I'm walking, Infinite I'll play. just use Spotify. But mm-hmm. like when I'm on my phone, like walking, doing anything outside the house or even in the house, when I'm not like walking, I'll always use Apple Music. Mm. But Spotify is more like when you're in the zone, like just need something playing in the background, something. I just hear something new. But Apple Music is for like when I want to sit down and go through a project and just like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I feel like Apple Music, well, Spotify seems to me more tailored towards like getting you new new things. Yes. Yeah. So it's like you're, it's very much like, okay, like here's what we think you'll like based on what, you know. Mm-hmm. But I feel like Apple Music is like if you have a library that you like or like certain things you're very specific about listening to and you yeah. don't want anything else, then it's mm-hmm. like a better place to be. Because also it's it doesn't, like I open Spotify and immediately I've got like so many new songs that are being fed, which is nice yeah. when I'm looking for new things. But mm-hmm. then also sometimes I'm just like, I really want to go to this specific mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. playlist or ETC. So I guess yeah. it depends on what kind of listener you are too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, I have a question regarding the album. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, congratulations on the release. So you had a release party last week. Mm-hmm. How was that? Uh, how was that like it was cool. It was, um, it was definitely, it was really lovely. I think mm-hmm. like the organization of it was a bit like touch and go, but it came together quite nicely. And like, nice. it was also cool to have like my friends and family and mm-hmm. like also collaborators in like one place. And, and yeah, just like a moment for people to sit with it. I got mm-hmm. to talk about each song for the first time because it's oh, a lot nice. of songs. So I was just kind of yeah. like, okay, there's not really going to be a time where I can, like not every song is going to get a video, not every song is going to get like a spotlight. So to mm-hmm. actually like talk about them was really interesting, even just for me, because I, I hadn't thought about, you know, I hadn't been in that place before, like to actually think about where this came from. Mm-hmm. Um, it was really 
cute to have like my fam there yeah. <laughs> like nice. i think That's they got nice. a nice like moment of like gas like oh yay like you know and like yeah like, this music thing is working out you know yeah. literally <laughs> it, was, it was so crazy because like my parents were there and then like my uncle pulled up at some point and like, i just told it was just a collective look and some of them just like oh wow this is a real thing like, yeah, this is, yeah. This is a, so that was really that was heartwarming for me and then uh just to have sort of like because i think it's this sort of vague thing you talk about when people ask how it's going like oh i'm working on the album work on the album it's almost like mm-hmm. sometimes people can almost be like are you just saying this are you saying this yeah so we can feel like you're doing some shit yeah. and then mm-hmm. it's like no like actually this is a thing that took some time but now it's come together mm-hmm. we got to sort of create a little pocket in the universe for people to like engage with it and i think that to me is mm-hmm. going to always be one of the most special experiences nice yeah That's dope. my question mm-hmm. um on the album, there's music from like 2020. There's like Dog Tail on there, mm-hmm. and I just want to ask, um, like, do you feel like um, in your evolution as an artist, have you been very intentional on it, or is it something that just came as you went along creating, into like um, from where you started out when you started out music, now putting out the album? How has the evolution been? Has it been something you've been very intentional about, about how you can change and improve and become better, or is it just like um, something that just happened with the experiences that you've gone through? Uh, I think a bit of both. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. I. The weird thing is, yeah, some of the songs actually were written even in 2019. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Like the songs that I knew were like STL um, was made. STL goes to both made in 2019. And like they, uh, to me, the favorite songs in the album, some of them. But it was definitely like an earlier version of me, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. both like some like lyrically and like also just production wise. Um, I do think like as the album started to develop, I had to kind of scrutinize a bit more on what I'm trying to say. Mm-hmm. Um and because I was also worried, like in my mind, one of the things that started to stress me out was like when it kept getting delayed for various reasons, I would mm-hmm. start to think about like, oh, do I need to just like put this out or like, do I shelve this music and just make a new thing? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think sometimes that's like an idea that's pushed that the album has to be sort of like a year or so of music, like of defined time. Mm-hmm. Or like you have to like have it be a concept album where you start with a specific idea and then end with it. But I think what was beautiful about this is that the idea, the idea came after some of the music was made, but I could be mm-hmm. like, I was like, this, I, this feels like it resonates with like what I was trying to say in these songs. And then even though I've made so much music between now and then, like even like some of the singles like Fireflies and mm-hmm. our favorite songs, like those are two songs that like in a way could have been on the album, but to me felt like they had their own sort of separate life. Yeah. And then I remember making later music, um, like my favorite song on the album is I Would Hope. And like that song came out, came about like last. Mm-hmm. Like it was one of the, f- but it still felt like it was part of that um, feeling. Okay. And so I think like, there had to be, there was definitely an intention to like grow and build on this, but they had, I had to also let go a little bit and like allow mm-hmm. things to, um, yeah, just breathe and just sort of like um, become what they are naturally instead of mm-hmm. forcing like a really rigid idea of like, this is what this album should be. It should be. And I mean, honestly, if I was more intentional about that, it would not be 15 tracks. Long. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'm really happy it is. So yeah. yeah. Um, I'm more interested in the visual language as well. Like so far, you've um, how many videos from the album do you have out? Um, I have three. No. Yeah, three. Ghost. Yeah, Ghost. I like. I would say two. Honestly, STL is more of like a visualizer. Yeah, and there's like there's one for Refuge. Refuge that's coming out. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, nice. Yeah, so. Um, how do you come together with these videos? Like, um, I I particularly like like it because um, I learned that you're a filmmaker as well Ooh, my um, talented. we stand <laughs> <laughs> and and like if you watch all your videos like together at the same time there's um just a, a similarity that um i guess shows or showcases that you have a style in the way that you crafted um the visual style of each video so mm-hmm. who inspires you the most when it comes to um putting together music videos like this Ooh. Or in this way, um, is like is there a musician, a director that inspires you in the way that you express yourself visually? I think definitely. Um, ooh, <laughs> that's, that's a, good a good question. question. Yeah, because I feel like question. a lot of my early music video inspirations aren't necessarily the same videos I make now. Mm-hmm. Like I think that I was really inspired for a while by like. Um, like Kiro Murai, who does mm-hmm. like Atlanta and stuff. Um, and also like certain 
certain videos by oh like i mean so like i i think there's two ways to approach a video sometimes which i like mm-hmm. is like you can tell a story then you can also go about it in a way where it's just like capturing the vibe yeah and so i really like this director yoni lapin who did a lot of mirror masters videos Ooh. and like they were very much like it wasn't necessarily like a whole fleshed out storyline but it was like captured the feeling really well and so i think i used to because i studied film like i used to be very story oriented mm-hmm. and then i would kind of find myself like overthinking what i wanted to say and what i wanted to do and it would just end up being this like um this really like dense treatment that has to be all these things and i was like uh like i don't have to you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. like it's not it doesn't have to be layers on layers it can just be like good vibes and like mm-hmm. yeah. at the end of the day a music video to me is like i mean it's a horrible it's, it's not a good investment money wise mm-hmm. like you just the thing it's gonna lose money <laughs> <laughs> but then it's like thinking about how that can help sort of allow people into the world of the music mm-hmm. um and so then i started sort of I realized at a certain point like with the songs on here mm-hmm. like I liked I I liked sort of creating a base idea and then allowing a director or like cinematographer to come in and actually like flesh it out because mm. um it's hard to change hats sometimes so I didn't want yeah. to like give myself too much pressure to be like okay let me like now go into directing mode and try and like create this whole thing um mm-hmm. but I do I think what I like about all the videos is like they're definitely very um like they focus on the feeling and yeah. like what color is the song what you know what shape what shape of yeah. these songs yeah <laughs> you're loving this is your no, the, it's, 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 no it's it's just the way that his music is communicated to me like mm-hmm. i see it in like hues and shapes and i don't know like spheres there's always like a it's it's very dense visually <laughs> I, I'll, I'll say that Thank and you. i have to ask a question about how you are sitting sideways on a Buddha oh. eating cereal. <laughs> so <laughs> what's that about? How long were you on the Buddha and how fast was he going? And like, how are you not oh, falling down? We were on it for a while. Surprisingly, yeah. I didn't fall once. Honestly, I feel like I've just practiced. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> <Tuesday. Buddha> practiced. <laughs> <laughs> Equ- equilibrium. Yeah. Um, <laughs> It's like a Olympic uh, sport. Yeah, man. Because yeah. that was that was a while. I was just like, like not budging at all. Like. It's strange. I feel like so. Like, hey, <laughs> I remember like so. That, like, we had we decided obviously we're not gonna do this on a road. Mm-hmm. There's sort of like this, um, and like where my mom lives. Like before you mm-hmm. get into the estate, there's this sort of like lane that's like not very driven on often. Mm-hmm. It's like this carbro road, and we just kind of decided we're just gonna circle around there. It took ages, by the way, to get like shot. Yeah, because those, yeah, those issues just like. Um, it was two friends of mine. So like Chebeni, the director was shooting and then shout Nathaniel, out shout out Chebeni. Shout out um, Nathaniel was driving, shout out mm-hmm. Nat. We were just like circling around, trying to find the perfect angle. And there was only a few straight sort mm-hmm. of spaces. So like we would do like part of the song and then be like, okay, let's go all the way around and do like the yeah. next part of the song. <laughs> um, and then I was at first going to sit forward, but then I was like, okay, this makes no sense. Mm-hmm. But then when I sat sideways, I was like, at first it was like, oh shit, but he wasn't going that fast, honestly. I think the fact yeah. that the lens was close mm-hmm. um, gave a lot more of that impression that there was more oh, speed. Yeah. Um, and then I just had to like trust, I guess. Like, <laughs> the eating cereal helps you distract yourself from the fact that you're on a moving vehicle. Yeah. <laughs> but it was also a peak because like the cereal got soggy after a very quick mm-hmm. while. And then I was like, okay, we have no more milk. The way yeah. I was just like on there eating dry cornflakes and yeah. trying to wrap. <laughs> Did you spill the cornflakes at any time? Like there's, I spilled it like out my, so I would try and take a bite and then it would just like fly out my mouth. And I was like, you know what? It's part of the, we can't, we can't win everything, so... All right, all right. I'm trying to remember mm-hmm. which one Nelly song did Chebeni direct? Oh, extra pressure. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's a dope video. The one that has Rono in it. Oh. Yeah, he's he's dope. He's, he's very he's good. very brilliant. And and for this particular project, he directed Ghost. Yeah, he directed Ghost. Yeah. And Ghost and okay, I want to know more about um, one collaboration first. Um, I wanted to ask you about Haba na Haba. It's mm-hmm. a very ambitious collaboration of like. There's so many artists on that on that, on that song that like um, work really well together. I I don't think I've seen Monsky, Chevy Kev, Frida Flo, Maya, and you on one mm-hmm. song before. <laughs> so I really like Haba na Haba, but I want to know um, how it came together. Like, how did you find each artist to come along for this particular song, also, and how why? Did you, how did you mm. see, find them as the right fit for the song? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think that song. I remember I just was thinking about like 
So I really liked, I mean, Have No Habit to me was like one of my favorite songs I had made. It was like the most hip hoppy in some mm-hmm. ways. And like, it just felt like the ethos of like kind of that, mm-hmm. that era of hip hop that was just about like rhyming about life in yeah. the good and the bad. And it's like positive, but it's also, yeah, it's just ruminating. Mm-hmm. And then I kind of thought, you know, it'd be really cool to have it kind of be a bit of a cypher. Yeah, yeah, like that's, what it, that's what it sounds like. And I was, it was actually a while. It was like it was like it was 2019. I think that was one of the first songs from the album that mm-hmm. was actually like intentionally. I was like, okay, I'm doing an album and I want to have a remix and I want to have it be like featuring Kenyan artists, Kenyan rappers specifically. Um, and I didn't know many at the time, mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. it was literally just a coincidence as well. Of like, I met Chevy through uh, Free to Flow um, mm-hmm. at like his party and then when I met like the rest of the Espresso gang and like yeah. um and then when I came back that that like uh December we there was a showcase for Tangaza it was like their first show mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. we were on the bill with Chevy and Monsky. Yeah. So I just like shot my shot and like we had followed each other on Instagram but I was just like to Monsky like you I think you're really dope. I hadn't really met her properly but I was like if you're mm-hmm. interested um I'd love to hear what you'd spit on this. Um yeah. And so, yeah, and then, and like, um, Maya was kind of my first music friend, like, yeah. especially like in Nairobi, because mm-hmm. we met ages ago um, mm-hmm. when we both were in uni. And so, yeah, I was just like, okay, let's just, it was more of an experiment than anything. Yeah. And then when it came together, I was like, this is perfect. Oh my God. And it was like, yeah, it was so fun to hear like mm-hmm. what other people's takes were when mm-hmm. you asked them just to like, you know, take the idea of the song and like the 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 methodology of like yeah just patience and trusting the process yeah um true. yeah so it was cool Still. yeah i got a question for you it's mm-hmm. a bit uh a bit personal okay not really that personal <laughs> <laughs> okay so on the album there's like uh personal themes that you talk about uh, mm-hmm. some of the things you, you you rap you sing about um i just want to know like uh is this drawn from real life experience and also how much of yourself do you put into the creative process? How much of you is, like, do you limit what you what you write about or mm-hmm. create? Or is it just that you pour yourself out into the notepad and then whatever comes out, that's what you're going to offer the people? I think it's the second. Mm-hmm. I think, like, I don't actually, because even some of the songs aren't necessarily, like, structured like songs. Mm-hmm. I kind of abandoned the process for a while of, like, trying to make a song methodically. It, was, it helped that mm-hmm. I didn't actually have like, I would always write songs, but, like, I wasn't a trained songwriter or anything. Mm-hmm. So, like, it would just kind of be, like, I write and then I find a way to make it fit within the, the sonics, like, when I make the beat or, like, if I make a beat mm-hmm. first. Um, but, yeah, I really, like, honestly, and that's why this album is also weird is because I know it's, like, super intimate uh, or, like, mm-hmm. super uh, personal. And I'm someone who isn't necessarily, like, that when you first talk to me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um and but i knew i noticed that and especially when i was trying to like just start making music like it was very hard for me to write from another perspective Mm -hmm. um it just didn't feel genuine Mm -hmm. and then i started actually like and i would find myself like you know going through something or like um struggling with whatever whatever and like then the words could just like pour out and they they actually came out in their best form because it's just like um, yeah, you're, you're getting it straight from source. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I think like I, I now kind of try and employ that vibe of just like whatever comes out, comes out. If I want to then curate what is said, I can. And I've gotten better at maybe not diluting how I feel, but making it fit better for the song. Mm-hmm. Um, but I definitely want to stick to that process of just like everything is just blah. So everything like you hear on the album is actually just like straight thoughts. Like it's, uh-huh. yeah. yeah. A steady Still. outboarding basically. Literally, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Also, mm-hmm. why the underscores? Oh man, I wish I had like a deep meaningful. <laughs> I know, like I really want to know why the underscores. I really think. Like, is it like missing words that we have to figure out? Is it like yeah. a no, we have to It's so funny because everyone asked me that. They were like, "Oh, it's like a word search," Ooh. and I was yeah. like, <laughs> "Or like a like a crossword." I'm like, "No, it's just mm. like um, I just thought it looked cooler than dots." <laughs> I was like, "Yeah." I'm not gonna make an acronym. I think I did it as a. It has a very 2000s feel. Yeah. <laughs> I remember doing it first, like, for one of the songs, because I was like, STL, but, like, I don't know if I want to make it, like, an acronym or just have it be, like, one word. And I tried the underscore, so, like, this is kind of edgy. Like, let me just... <laughs> and, then, and then, like... And then it fit with, like, the other two, I guess, acronym songs. So mm-hmm. I was like, okay, let's make a... 
to make it a thing. Yeah, yeah. Cool. at yeah. least you've explained because I'm sure guys will be like, "What does this mean?" Oh man, so many people have questions mm. or like, "Oh, it's called like still," mm. or um, scared yeah, scared to love. Yeah, scared <laughs> to love. <laughs> There's no one like killing me, but yeah, um, yeah. it was it was interesting. But I think yeah, I, I I like also not explaining things sometimes. Yeah, um, just 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 to see. I was low key like when Trevenny and I made the ghost video, we had so many ideas and some at uh, some point we're just like like why do we need to like be super uh what's the word on the nose with things mm-hmm. um we kind of want this to be a head scratcher just for fun um yeah. i think it's totally acceptable as long as like the imagery you're showing is not like disrespectful or harmful in any way um to do things because they look cool um mm-hmm. yeah. so yeah yeah. Nice, at least because I was wondering, like, are there missing words here? Like, what does it's really it's mean? a puzzle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what does it mean? Yeah. I thought it was like Scrabble. I was giving that, to be honest. It was, because I was wondering, like, hey, mm-hmm. maybe there's a hidden meaning in here. Maybe there's something we're not picking up on. Do I have to listen to the song again? Maybe pick up yeah. some few clues here and there. But at least you've explained it just for the vibes. For sure, just for the vibes. Yeah, but then mm-hmm. doing things for the vibes is fun. It is. It is. It is. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Um, I had one question about. What is my question about? Hey, Jackie. Okay. Um, <laughs> sorry, I jumped. <laughs> While she's looking for that, yes. please tell Twitter user at Gambino Film about me. <laughs> I will let her know. Yeah, please do. Please. Do. I got you. <laughs> okay, I, I I wanted to know um more about like your favorite songs on the album. Mm-hmm. Um, I know that there's a difference between your favorite song to produce and your favorite song to write. Mm. But what was your favorite song to mix? Oh, so I don't mix. You don't um, mix. No, I like I I do like the so the producer thing of like I guess mm-hmm. you mix enough that it's like a good demo. Mm-hmm. So usually I'll like mix I'll mix my vocals and I'll mix you know the beat and then I'll give it to. Uh, engineer in this case Luca Rito is like one of the main oh, engineers nice. yeah. another one was this guy in the states called Ben Shakin he mm-hmm. also goes by Beshkin and like he um I would, I'll usually give them the stems that I've mixed already mm-hmm. so at least it has like the the beginnings of what I wanted it to sound like mm-hmm. versus everything just being dry um but I think it was in terms of that side of things I feel like it might be um I would hope Mm-hmm. Or um, either that or I like, honestly, mm-hmm. um, which were two songs that came sort of a bit later. Um, but once they kind of got fleshed out and I could tweak and polish things, they really like came to life. Um, Why I would hope? Honestly, like I, I think it was just like, the songs had like so many lives. Because I think mm-hmm. when I first made it, it was like, um, it, it sounded like more sparse and like a bit more mm-hmm. melancholic. Um mm-hmm. And I think I just like I knew I wanted like four on the floor vibes. Yeah. It's definitely like a crying at the club, so <laughs> <laughs> but, like, but like, you know, you're still dancing. Um yeah. and so I think when I started making it even just like the little percussive elements or like the synth, I remember spending like which I guess counts as mixing, like I spent like an hour just making this one synth sound, you know, mm-hmm. I guess unique in that way. And you tweak it, you reverse it, you kind of put it through various like filters just to try and get it to like have the exact breath and feeling that you're looking for mm-hmm. um and then even after all that like it wasn't i knew there could be a bit more i mm-hmm. wanted it to be, kind of be filled out and that's when i sent it to jay james and maui moon um and jay james being a producer like you know technically it would be additional production but i wanted it to be a feature because in my mind i'm like you've added it's almost like the equivalent of a verse but like through your production um mm-hmm. so yeah i think that's that's the best for mixing um, Speaking of Maui Moon, are we going to see like a collaborative project soon, maybe? Hey, man, mm. I really hope so. <laughs> I need to get... He, he really pushes me into my R&B bag. Mm-hmm. It's, it's great. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm excited to get a chance to do more. Because right now it's been a lot of like back and forth. Like we send each other stuff. But like um, when we're hopefully in the same place, we can actually mm-hmm. like... If we had like a week, honestly, we could make something happen. Because he's also brilliant and works so quickly and he produces... Um, and so I think it could be like great synergy, but the only issue is yeah. we've only had like two days together at a time. Oh. Mm. Um, but even those two days when I saw him in like Uganda, we made like a bunch of songs that are yet to come out. So hopefully build on yeah. it. Like, yo, we need, we need an EP at least. <laughs> yeah, at yeah, least, yeah, no, at least, at least, at least. So Feed the streets. W- one of, one of my more, um, it's, it's a, it's a question of curiosity. Mm. I, um, want to know if, okay. I saw that you have like a fictional dinner table. 
mm-hmm. um, of artists dead or alive that you would have um, come over for dinner, whatever, just for conversation and stuff. I saw Vince Staples and Little Sims on yours. Oh, uh, you wait, remember that it? interview? It was, was it the <laughs> newcomer one? No, which which one was it? It's yeah, with the, the nation. It was a really long time. Oh ago. yo, yes, <laughs> yes. But yes. Um, I saw that Little Sims was on was on your um, fictional dinner table, and mm. I was interested in that. Like, um, would you? I, I love the way that she like creates films for um, the projects that she does. Even like when she goes on tour and stuff like that. Yeah, is that your approach to um, like fusing film and music for yourself? And should we expect like a, a shorty maybe? Shorty. <laughs> um, honestly, I would I would say yes because I mm-hmm. think like it's something that I've been meaning to do for a while. I mm-hmm. feel like. Um, yeah, I love the way she approaches it in the sense that like it's it's really about um, mm-hmm. sort of folk like seeing where an idea could go beyond just like the formats that make it a product, I suppose. And like yeah. filmmaking in general is like the most. It's very unsustainable. It's very expensive. <laughs> um, you know, a lot of films are made. You are not putting confidence in people who want to be filmmakers. Like, no, no, no. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you. Like, I, and it's funny because, like, I'm still like a big believer. Like, film needs to exist, but it's just like mm-hmm. once. I think I when I was in the like thick of it, mm-hmm. making it, I was just kind of like, wow, this is really like a labor of love kind of thing. Um, and I do love it, but I think it made me think about how important it is to be intentional with whatever I make. So I'm not just like, you know, making a short for the sake of it like i think i also think if i was to and i hopefully will make sort of a longer form visual Mm -hmm. uh, element to the album i'd want it to be something that's like complements the music and not just like you know it's it's not like just sort of the same thing but like visually i'd want it to bring a new element to that world um Mm -hmm. maybe have some characters in it um and i think yeah i really love um if even in videos honestly but like i just really love how uh, little sims does that um Mm -hmm. i think it's also the nature of like we're both quite dense writers at times um Mm -hmm. and and if anything you just want to see what other space you can give to those words and to let them kind of yeah to let them uh grow into new things i kind of see it as like a garden sometimes and it's like if you can suki who would be at your fictional dinner table my fictional dinner table yes Someone asked me that question last week, and I don't know why I said boob. And, um, I just said I, <laughs> I just need someone to be like really funny across the. Table. I like boob. That'd be that'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. No, like I'd, I'd seen him in some film. Um, I think like three weeks ago, and I felt like I need that version of boob. And I'm just someone funny. The uh, in promising young woman. Oh. I just need someone that's going to be funny enough across the table. Sometimes you think that the person across the table has to teach you, like, f- free game. No. Nah. They just need to be entertaining. <laughs> you know, with Jay-Z type vibes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, I, yeah, who's on your um, fictional Ooh. dinner table? Let me think about it. The first person would have to be Dom Kennedy. But pre-2015, Dom Kennedy. I feel like, <laughs> I feel like, like you would eat with the, Larry June the, as well. Numbers. I, 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 I would love to like Larry June but no but you know Dom Kennedy is basically Larry June before La, like the Larry June prototype yeah like everything Dom Kennedy did Larry June just improved on it so I, I'd love to have Larry June um, Richie Valens mm-hmm. La Why? Bamba mm-hmm. again just want to hang out with people I like <laughs> Richie Valens is cool yeah yeah I would get that um, who else would I get I'm just trying to think Sophie Oh, Sophie Ooh, nice. dead or alive yeah she's a dead or alive yeah. like doesn't matter I'd get Sophie on there I don't want it to be a big dinner where everybody's talking over everybody. So probably like three or four people <laughs> max. Because like this isn't one of those like, you know, in old movies where the dinner table is like, yeah, how like, did you <laughs> long? And you don't know who's sitting it's where. It's like a banquet. Just can talk to like three people around you. No, no, no. Just like something intimate. Yeah. Three or four people. Yeah. At currency. Ah, I would love mm-hmm. it. Just to know how. Currency is the ultimate like sign of longevity. Mm-hmm. Like he was the first mm-hmm. artist ever signed to Young Money. Mm-hmm. Like ever, ever. This is like 2006, I think gets dropped, gets, puts out his own stuff. Now it's like, what, 16 years later, he's still relevant. He's still working with the best artists and he's mm. still doing his thing. So that's just like the people I would like to just hang out with and listen to. That would be my yeah. fictional dinner table. That's dope. That's a good, host. That's now, a good mix of people. Mao, mm. uh, anytime we have like an artist come on the show, we mm. just ask them this question. Can you give me one or two albums that you consider 10 out of 10? <sighs> and why? It's very important. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> um... Okay. Can I take a look? 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. you can take a look. You can take okay, a give look. Give me a sec. Give me a sec. Give me a sec. I know one of them. Mm-hmm. I'm just trying to like think of the other. I think the two um, of mine would be like if I was to get to right now again, Sophie, oil of every part is on insides. Mm-hmm. Ten out of ten. Mm-hmm. And um, what's this called? Forever and a day by Big Crips. Oh, nice. That mm. is such a good album. It's a it's an amazing concept album. All production handled by him. One of the like one of the a classic of southern rap. If you have the time, please just look into it. He's such an amazing writer. He he's an amazing rapper. He's an amazing writer, but he's an even better producer. His sampling is he he knows how to flip samples completely. Mm-hmm. His first album actually, his first like official official like major label album had BB King as mm. a feature, which is insane. Whoa, yeah, <laughs> that's a big flex. <laughs> yeah. big flex. So, but I feel like Forever in a Day is such a wonderful project. Mm-hmm. Just and exactly how it's crafted, you you would not get it's a concept album immediately, but once you go through it, you realize the there's a story being told all along. Oh, nice. You have any too? For today? Yeah, just off the top of your head. I do not have anything off the top of my head right now. I'm on my quest to start. My God. I, no, I'm not starstruck. <laughs> it's like, for me, for me, it's like, I, I don't have a visual bank of all the albums I particularly like love and I haven't revisited them in a while. Mm-hmm. Mm. But I will add them to the list, actually. Yeah, actually, I'll add this to yeah. the list. We actually do have a list of everything we mentioned. On the like description yeah. oh, the nice. episode, so like guys, and just everything we've mentioned, I think since episode two. Yeah, I, f- I feel like people losing their music libraries like might have also motivated us to do that, yeah. like having a different place where we have most of the music that we've listened to this year listed. Mm. Fantastic way to like shout. keep track. Psycho Bombers <laughs> play this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and for guys who are listening to the show exactly. actually much later, because the guys who might discover us tomorrow, or like guys True. who might discover us from this episode. It, it's a good day for them to just go back and see what we've been listening to since I think like middle of last year. Yeah, and listen Everything. to some new artists. Yeah, listen to some new people artists. you've never seen before, like even people you've seen before but you'd forgotten that this project came out this mm. year. You can just yeah. choose any random project and you'll have fun by the way. Mm. Yeah. So tell us your projects. Oof, okay. Mm-hmm. Uh can I say three? Yeah. 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 I would say so um well, actually no, I'll stick with two for now. And they're kind of similar artists, honestly. Um, I would say Telephone mm-hmm. by Nanem, mm-hmm. uh, and Care for Me by Salva. Ooh, nice. Like two, okay. like very good, like no skip. Just mm-hmm. you kind of just go, yeah. It really gets you into that world, but like I think the they're obviously they still have like roughness to them, mm-hmm. but I really like that because I feel like it um, it's the beauty. It's kind of like the the beautiful kind of unpolished nature of like um yeah of someone finding their feet in their craft like it's it's less focused i mean it's really good music but i think i really appreciate um projects that are more focused on like getting you the feeling and the story versus like being this um yeah hyper polished sort of like grandiose thing with like a lot of like live instrumentation and etc like um to me it just really felt like they're really well self-contained like um Mm -hmm. Yeah, bodies of work. So I think those two. Nice. Um, I think I had one last question, which is, what's your favorite tweet of your own? Ah. (laughs) Notorious Twitter user. Notorious Twitter user. Mouth from from (laughs) nowhere. I like it's so funny. I literally, like the, 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 I really think if I had like a manager earlier, yeah. like, like, <laughs> like none of this would have happened. If I had like blown yeah. up and had like management, you see the people would be like, yo, relax. <laughs> like nigga, you're doing a lot. But I think for me, Twitter, like, because I started out when like, no one's following you. So I'm just like, let me just be silly and like just <laughs> say dumb things. Twitter, like, they don't it's the whole point of Twitter. It's you stream can't, of consciousness. Yeah, yeah. literally. Yeah. Like, it's like, it's the place for your intrusive thoughts, in my opinion. <laughs> and so like, I remember like tweeting just random shit especially even before my music got any traction mm-hmm. and then i think there were just times where i had like a period where like every month a tweet would like just go way beyond its target audience mm-hmm. yeah. which is like <laughs> it was like my 500 followers at the time and i'd be like oh fuck like now i have this like one time i went on like there was a reddit thread against me like mm-hmm. there was like people who were like really angry that like i said something about white people and like mm-hmm. they got it was like a whole thread of just like fuck this guy like i can't believe it like reverse <laughs> racism i was like oh god um reverse racism isn't real by the it's way it's not it, it can't it's be certainly real. not but i feel like um my favorite tweet uh, was, or like my smartest, in my opinion, yeah. was the, there is no ethical consumption of Drake. Uh, 
<laughs> which I stand, which I stand by. And I'm not saying that like, you know, you don't, you can't mm-hmm. enjoy drink. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm just saying that we as a society have to understand like much like capitalism. It's like, it, it's not without its evil. It's never mm-hmm. without its evil. Like, mm-hmm. so when you're, when you're on the floor enjoying one dance, just know <laughs> <laughs> that like there's a, yeah, you're allowing this man to, to prosper in ways that could also be harmful. <laughs> and I, I love, I, oh man, I'm a, I have a lot of Drake favorites. But yeah, yeah, like, so you don't suspiciously say that people on the dance floor or Nah, <laughs> never. I saw, I saw a TikTok where someone was like, these two girls were on, at the club and then like, they were waiting for the next transition because they were really mm-hmm. fucking with the song. And then the next song that came on was Marvin's Room. Mm-hmm. And they were so upset and disappointed. <laughs> and I know for a fact, I would be so excited if I was at the club in Marvin's Room. No, nah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't. The club is for escapism, man. <laughs> That the club is also, I'm that's the most sad thing I've ever bro, heard. I know it's it's like, awful. <laughs> it's awful, but I think because in my mind I'm just like, yeah. I'm like, if I'm in the right space with the right people, mm-hmm. we would just rap it aggressively, almost. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> we're not sad boys. We're, we're not just sad boys. boys who are sad. We're just, it, mm-hmm. we're just boys <laughs> who are sad. There's a difference. There's a huge difference. Mm-hmm. The thing with Drake that bothers me because you listen to Jimmy Cooks and you'll be like, yeah, this bangs. Mm-hmm. And then you'll go on Twitter or Instagram and see Drake do the corniest thing alive and be like, nah. Oh, so corny. Nah, like, I can't fuck with this nigga. <laughs> and and it's, it's you so... go listen to Lemon Pepper Freestyle like, yeah, this dude can rap. Mm-hmm. And then he goes to do another corny thing and you're like, you're 36. No, literally. <laughs> <laughs> you're 36. Yeah, exactly. No, genuinely. He's yeah. way too old for this. Like, he's, he's he way is. too old for this. Um, do I want him to stop? I don't know. But like, I think at this no, point... No, the entertainment value is really let high. Him like, yo, like, let him like, cook for a let sec. <laughs> He'll be doing this shit at 45 and mm-hmm. he'll still be here be like, yo, it'll even be cornier then. <laughs> <laughs> the entertainment value is extremely high from Drake. Like, mm-hmm. it, either through his music or whatever he's doing, that man put a, like, the heart shape in his hair and I was like, nah. Oh my mm-hmm. God. You were hiding a child. <laughs> Can't and then he's like, man. he says, I'm not hiding the world, you from the world, I'm hiding the world from you. Man, just shut the fuck up, man. Oh, bro, like, just don't, don't try and defend this. Yeah, like, like just keep it moving, man. And then the switch up was crazy. <laughs> now he's yeah. there, you know what I'm saying? Like, actively posting all the time, him and his kid. I felt, mm. I feel really bad, but like, I wonder how many, I'm concerned heavily uh, for attraction alopecia when it comes to uh, his kid. Because you see how tight those braids are. <laughs> And sometimes like, you look at that child and you're like, I don't know. Oh my God. I don't know if your curl pattern is built for this. Respectfully. Jeez. Um, but I feel like because of your dad's aesthetic, you have to. Do you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Maybe just like start slow, two strand twists. I don't mm-hmm. know. But like now he's going straight for the. Oh, man. You're doing that kid's life. He's not even five years. I'm telling you. Watch for that hairline. I'm worried Whoa. about you, Dennis. Crazy. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. As in, what, what rappers inspire you? I'd like to know that. Because mm. I'm very big into like. That's my, I, I love hip hop. Like, I love just sitting down, dissecting through the art form and everything. Just like to know, like, what rappers inspire you? Do you enjoy listening to them? It doesn't even have mm-hmm. to be something that you channel in your music, just something you listen to for the vibes, maybe. Well, yeah. um, I really like Jid, JID. Mm-hmm. Um, I really like, I'm getting a lot more into like um, UK rap, but like, mm-hmm. sort of it's more slow paced or like it's less wordy. I'm like very mm-hmm. wordy. So I like people who can kind of just like say short things in it. Like, it's like, there's an artist called Bao who I like mm-hmm. listen to a lot more now based in the UK. Um, and yeah, I think, I think what I've learned recently is like, it's a very, it's harder than it looks to like capture the vibe mm-hmm. when you're rapping than it is to like sound smart. Mm-hmm. Like I feel like sometimes like there's a sort of like stigma where people like, or like preference where like the intellectualism of it, like like these really wordy dense and like double, triple entendres. Yeah. But I'm just like, yo, like actually this bangs and they don't have to say that much at all. Mm-hmm. Zach Fox, high key. I think Zach Fox yeah. is a rapper that inspires me a lot <laughs> yes. because he just be saying shit and it's like, it's, yeah. it hits and it's like so, so funny. I'm being kicked in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I also obviously mm-hmm. really like um, Little Sims as I mentioned. Mm-hmm. Um, and and no name a lot. Um, I feel like they're also uh, people who, I think for me, vocabulary wise and like like in picture painting wise, mm-hmm. I think yeah. was like is like really cool to listen to. Um, but yeah, I think I'm sort of trying to um, get more into how I can like rap for fun, as well mm-hmm. as like rap to express. 
and like create, creating something fun for people to enjoy, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. which is why like I have, yeah, utmost respect for and like um, try and sort of like listen to and not study too much because I feel like it's a very like self drawn thing, but like artists who can kind of, um, yeah, make people feel good, make lyrics that you want to rap as well, mm-hmm. um, which, you know, is not easy. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so, and especially like here, I think there's a lot of artists who like, um, do that really well um i think uh especially like luco for example is someone who like he can rap on anything and he can kind of do like he can do the like i'm the nigger like raps or like he can do like the i am you know going through it raps (laughs) which i think i really really appreciate Mm -hmm. uh tg same um and yeah uh i feel bad that every time i ask this question i'm just like blanking in many ways but um but yeah, mm-hmm. I think like I'm I'm really interested to see how like rap can be like more of a tool than the genre sometimes. Yeah. Um yeah. and so like I'm I've been trying to also just practice doing that on different things. Actually one artist I really like who does that well and kind of similar to TG is Dean Spencer. Mm-hmm. Cuz he'll sort of like he'll make um he's made albums like his first one of my favorite songs by him is literally just like him rapping over like a very cinematic violin instrumental. Mm-hmm. Um so yeah, I think like there's a good mix there. That's a mm-hmm. You know what I hate? I hate elitists, rap elitists. Mm, Guys who think that it's all supposed to be lyrical criminal individual. <laughs> <laughs> In your <laughs> swimming <laughs> pool. <laughs> exactly. I and I meet people like that and then I tell them like some of my favorite rappers are Gucci Mane and Project Pat and they can't understand why I would listen to that. Mm-hmm. Because for them, the only thing that matters is being able to say as many words as you can and mm. make them rhyme as quickly as possible who tell you like Eminem is the greatest of all time like bro it's not 2002 like it's 2023 you don't have to listen to this you don't have to put yourself synonym and cinnamon exactly yeah literally <laughs> at all honestly and I feel like you gotta listen to like I think you when someone can capture something mm-hmm. like uh, like the feeling that makes you feel good and then also like they have like a unique voice because I realized how much of rap to me is also delivery mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um and so like when you can have something that like is so unique and like hits but then also like can bring up your energy or like take you to a certain place um mm-hmm. is like very powerful which is why like i really like i remember like the first time i listened to like flow millie mm-hmm. and i was yeah. like this is so fun mm-hmm. <laughs> and like so hard a, yeah so hard. whoa that yeah. song bangs mm-hmm. yeah. and i and i love how simple it is like you just vibe to it and he's he's hitting it like hey it's giving <laughs> yeah no you know in a very big way like yeah. um mm-hmm. there was a song i heard recently actually um that was like, uh, I think it was, uh, I need to remember the exact name, but it was, it was Mandy and someone else. Mm-hmm. Um, and I hope I can add it to the list of like songs here when I, when I remember the name. But I feel yeah. like, um, like the hook was literally like on a matter pier. Mm-hmm. I think it was like, mm-mm, like, and like to me I, that, I, I you know, know this was like, yeah. yeah, and I was just like, this is sick. Like, this is also just, <laughs> to me, it's like bad creative to like kind of mm-hmm. see what your voice can do. Um, but to me, yeah, I, I, I also really like how um, that's coming up now more in like, mm-hmm. r- in, in Kenyan rap too. Um, yeah. For mm-hmm. a long time, Kenyan rap was just like, who can drop the fastest? Who can drop the best? Mm-hmm. Like there's, th- there was this like Wordplay. inclination, like you have to be completely skilled. No, you don't. Like, in fact, like, people will fuck with you if the song is good, not because you can rap well. Mm-hmm. That's the thing. As long as, Literally. Like, as long as they vibe to your voice, if you have a great voice, you have a great flow, you don't have to write, like, a fucking thesis mm-hmm. as a song just for it to bang. Yeah. Yeah, and also I feel like the... Because I, I get the... What I love about, like, listening to people, like, rap, especially, like, in Kiswahili, I feel like because the language is, um, like, so frenetic and, like, mm-hmm. also, like, everything, like, vowel-based, I guess, like you can in theory rap a lot faster than in english like yeah. or like or you just put words together in ways that are more creative and i love listening to rappers do it but also like when you can actually slow things down and hear and like feel so the energy behind it like that to me like hits a lot more, so it hits a lot harder um and yeah because like i remember i think also like it's a youth thing like when i first started listening to rap i think i was really enamored by how fast people could rap mm-hmm. and i got to a point where Twist i was just like yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> Um, but I got to put where I was just like, okay, this is cool. But like, I also, I don't know, like, it's, I don't want to have to be like pausing, catching words, etc. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. So on the album, you you did the you handled all the production. Or? Yeah. So all the production except like uh, part of I would hope. And okay. the sequencing. 
uh, or like arrangement. Yeah, the like, arrangement, like oh, of tracks. Mm, yes. Yeah, of, of tracks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was also it also tells a story. So was that you as well? Mm-hmm. And what did you hope we would take away from it as we wind up? Oh, like the the like order. Yeah, I think. Um, I think I wanted us to like begin with. Um, yeah, sort of. Um, I didn't want it to be sort of like half is really melancholic, half is mm-hmm. really happy. I think I wanted to kind of emulate the give and take of how emotions feel. Yeah. I think here, if you need to me, is like a really good opener because it just invites people into that. Mm-hmm. Um, it starts off quite soft. It gets kind of hard at times, but it's like, it's sort of a gentle uh, intro to like, yeah, being vulnerable. And I guess I kind of wanted people to listen to it in a way that like, they could see me opening up and then taking them through that up and down. And like, just when you think it's getting to like, it's darkest, you get mm-hmm. to like a song like I like, which is like super happy. Um, mm-hmm. And yeah, I liked that it was sort of, um, the songs were not put in order of when I made them. I think they were just put in order of like that journey of feeling and getting to the, um, yeah, getting to a dark point, picking yourself up, not exactly knowing where it goes from here, but like finding some sort of peace in trusting where it's going to go. And I think that's why I also wanted the universe is holding you to the last track because it's like, yeah, like I'm not sure. And like, mm-hmm. I don't want to, I don't want to give you a happy ending that I don't know about <laughs> myself, <laughs> but I just know that I trust. Yeah. I, I'm still trying, I guess. Nice. That's great. So I think we've reached a uh, time, like at the mm-hmm. end of the episode. So before you go, just like you can tell people where to find you, where to find your music. And and stuff. Anything else you're doing that yeah. you... Yeah. Word, for sure. Um, you can find me on Instagram, uh, Mal from Nowhere. It's one word. Uh, Twitter, it's Kamal Wainaina, but the Y is W-H-Y. Mm-hmm. It's really... I should change it. I've had that since <laughs> like 15. Um, and yeah, Apple Music, Spotify, Tidal, especially Tidal because they pay. Um, on Mal from Nowhere. <laughs> Um, and in terms of things I'm working on, uh, I think just look out for like, hopefully some cool stuff. I've got some features coming out soon. I've got some collaborative projects I'm trying to finish up, especially with some artists here. Um, and yeah, inshallah, maybe something film soon. Nice. Nice. And thank you so much for having me. Oh, thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. It's been been a very interesting episode. Very fun. Um, this has been episode what? 26. I always forget by the way, like, (laughs) it's like a thing now. And if there's one thing you should take away from this episode is go stream Mao's music. It's amazing by the way, immediately. Like once you watch this, just stop, mm. go stream his music on Tidal. On Tidal. Even if you don't have a Tidal subscription, I <laughs> they'll give you a month for free. <laughs> exactly. Month for free, so Use yeah. that month. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this should be the reason you join Tidal, not to put money in Jay-Z's pockets. <laughs> <laughs> it's a mine. So yeah, uh, mm. thank you guys for vibing with us. This has been episode 26. We'll see you on the next one. See ya. Ooh.